Welcome, my friends, to PMP Exam Micro Learning with your buddy Phil. Today, we're talking about communications management. As usual, I have three questions for you. What is the first process in communications management? The answer is plan communications management. For most of these knowledge areas, except for integration and stakeholder, you always start with a plan something. So we plan communications management. We develop a communications management plan. That's step one. Let's see if you know step two. Come on now. What's step two in communications management? Ah, this is where you actually communicate. We call it manage communications. Manage communications means you're sending out communications in different mediums. You could be speaking on the phone. You could be speaking in person. You could be sending an email, be sending a letter. You could be communicating through a newsletter left outside the building or email to people. What is the third process in communications management? The answer is monitor communication. Note the word monitor. Monitor is used as opposed to saying control. Why is that? Well, when it comes to people, where people are in the knowledge area or at the center of the knowledge area, we tend not to use the word control. For example, in stakeholder management, we use the word monitor stakeholder engagement. And here we use the word monitor communications. So monitor communications is where you're checking to make sure that your communications are going according to plan, whatever you planned is working. Now let's go a little bit lower under the hood. Let's start off again from the very first process. Plan communications management is where you are planning the what, when, where, why, who, and how of communications. You are planning the five W's and the H. What are we communicating? Why are we communicating it? When are we communicating it? Who is communicating it? Where is the information stored or where is the meeting happening? How is the communication going to be communicated? These are the questions that are answered in the communications management plan. Remember that when you're planning communications, you've got to think about proper encoding. You've got to encode the communications. In other words, you've got to translate your ideas into a meaningful language that's encapsulated in an email or a speech or a talk that you're having with someone. When you do not encode properly, people do not understand the exact message you're trying to convey. That could lead to problems. So we encourage project managers to spend time crafting the message. That's encoding. Now, when you are encoding the message, be aware that the message needs to travel through a medium. This is where you also need to plan. What is the best way of communicating that people may lose their jobs? Is it over the phone? Is it in an email in a cold and callous way? No. You might want some face-to-face -face engagement because that will enrich the communication. It will also help people understand the empathy you're trying to project. So when you are crafting a message, when you are planning communications, you've got to think about the medium. You've got to also think about barriers to communication, such as noise. Distance could be a barrier where you're communicating across a hall. You could also have barriers to communication, such as someone wearing a wildly inappropriate dress to work. Oh, my goodness. Or someone wearing a collar riot suit to the office. It could block and hinder the message. Okay, jokes apart, but you understand what I'm saying. The PMI also talk about these barriers in the PMBOK guide, and they talk about the age gap between people being a barrier, right? Generational gaps. They talk about... Uh, religion gaps, race gaps, orientation. There could be so many gaps. And in order to close the gaps, we need to be empathetic. We need to have a culture of diversity and inclusion. We need to understand where people are and communicate appropriately. Not using words that will throw people off or words that will make people feel they're not being included or they're being disrespected. Disrespect will very quickly Take the air out of any great communication that you might have prior crafted. So when we talk about encode, decode, very important in the world of project management, we call it a communication model. When you are encoding, sending the message, the receiver is decoding it, and they are sending you a feedback message to assure you that they understood or did not understand, depending. 
So in the area of planning communications management, it's very important to give it some thought. Again, this is one of those knowledge areas that has people involved. And you know, people is a big chunk of the exam. So you really should make sure you understand communication models, communication methods. We have three communication methods, push, pull, and interactive. This is good to understand. You could push out a message. Doesn't really guarantee people got it or understood it. You can put information out on a server for people to pull as they need to. Doesn't assure you they did it. And then we can have interactive, which is real time. And that works very well where possible because you can ensure that people truly digested the message, understood it and received it. The questions on the PMP exam are likely to be very situational and they should reflect empathy, active listening and things like that. Not interrupting people, giving people ample time to speak, hearing people out, meeting with the stakeholders to have a meeting to discuss things where appropriate. Those will be the kinds of things you should be thinking about. The next process, manage communications, is all about the art of communicating. This is where you're speaking and you're doing things pragmatically to execute your plan. Last but not least, in this area, we should talk about reporting because performance reporting is a big part of managing communications. When you have created a work performance report in the monitor and control project work process, you don't distribute the report there. The report gets distributed here in manage communication. So manage communication is a very important process because not only are you talking to people or sending emails, you're also reporting. And those reports need to be customized sometimes. It is in this process you would customize those reports. Finally, we have monitor communications. This is where you're checking to ensure that your communications are working, the endpoint, everything that you need to convey was conveyed at the right time, you followed through with your communications planning and the customer is happy or maybe they're not happy. If the customer is not happy, this is where in monitor communications, you may need to make a tweak to adjust how you're communicating and ensure the customer is happy and satisfied with your communications. So that's it. Three processes. Plan communications management, manage communications, and monitor communications. I hope you've enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you've gotten value from it. And don't forget, go to hpmexam.com if you're looking for PMP exam training. If you're looking for on-demand training, go on down to tinyurl.com forward slash elite PMP or tinyurl.com forward slash elite cap M. And remember, we also have a full-blown mock exam at mock.hpmexam.com. Thank you for joining me today, my friends. I wish you all the very best on the test. Let me know how well you do. Bye for now.